Hello everyone, um, so for today's lesson I would like to take you through um, the exam application stuff which is on page 17 in your pack. Um, it looks at a 20 marker and a 10 marker. I'm not going to ask you to write them at this stage because I actually don't think you have enough information yet to kind of fully do the evaluations and things, um, but I thought it's good to introduce um, the skills and have a look at the item and how helpful it is and that kind of thing. So as I say, today we're looking at page 17 in your pack, so make sure you've got that ready to go. Um, we're going to look at the 20 marker and the 10 marker, and the aim is just to give you a bit of a starting point and some confidence in addressing questions like these. Um, so just to give you an idea of how you would go about attacking these questions, as we've done before in families really, but more we practice, the more confident you will become. So this is the 20 marker in your pack, and this is what we're going to start with looking at today. So I would like you to just pause at this point um, and read through the whole item, then read through the question, read through the item again and read through the question again and just see what that kind of gives you um, in terms of information and how you feel once you've done that. So take a pause. And um, once you've done that, we will move on to having a look at this item in a bit more depth. You're going to need a highlighter um, and you also probably will want to annotate as well. So a pen. OK, so we're going to start by thinking about the question and what the question is asking of us. Um, and on page 17 in your packs, you've got a space to make some notes on this. Now, what everything I've written on the slide might be you might find is sort of too much to fit in there. Um, but what I would suggest you do is sort of listen, first of all, and then at the end you can pause to write down anything that you um, want to write down uh, and try and fit in as much as you can, really. So I've highlighted this question. Um, the first part I've highlighted is applying material from item A. So we want to try and use the item at least twice. That's sort of like a good rule to follow. Um, but generally speaking, they're so helpful that you'll end up using it more than twice anyway. Um, and I really don't want you to get hung up on this because it's not like in the 10 markers where you must only take your points from the item. In these ones, it is applying material from the item and elsewhere and your knowledge, not just the item. So just remember that, that not all, it doesn't have to be in every paragraph, just somewhere in the essay you need to sort of refer to the item. Um, elsewhere means your sociological knowledge and actually I, I believe that normally they do actually the questions do actually say your knowledge um, not elsewhere I think this might be sort of an older question from the old spec where it used to say elsewhere but that was a bit vague and I think that's why they've changed it to um, apply material from the item and your knowledge just to make it extra clear that that's how you're getting in your kind of um, AO1 knowledge and understanding marks Next part I've highlighted then is evaluate. So as we know now, because we've looked at lots of evaluation questions, evaluate means that you're going to present the arguments and then assess how good they are, essentially, how reliable and valid they are. Um, so the way you're going to do that is by saying this person agrees with this and supports this view and this bit of evidence supports this view. Um, this is a useful contribution because, however, this person criticizes it or there is this opposing evidence um, or um, yeah this person disagrees um, and therefore you're kind of presenting a balanced view and recognizing that not every contribution is definitely a fact and nothing in in sociology really is necessarily a fact um, and there's always room for debate and discussion uh, next bit then i've put eval uh, We've highlighted evaluate, then we've highlighted sociological contributions. So by sociological contributions, we're really referring to um, key thinkers, theories and names. And that's how you get your AO1 knowledge and understanding marks. Um, and there are some key thinkers and names in your um, packs looking at these reasons. And you'll start to learn more and more as we go through um, the beliefs topic. There'll be more on this kind of topic later as well. Reasons for the appeal. This refers to why people are joining these particular organisations and those organisations are 
uh, new age movements and new religious movements. And you need to make sure you include both of these, reference to both of them. It doesn't have to be balanced. If you feel more confident on new age movements and want to do like three paragraphs on new age movements and one on new religious movements, then that's absolutely fine. Sometimes you might find that a point applies to both and you can fit kind of both into a paragraph. Um, I want you to start feel, feeling like um, as much as we give you essay structure, I don't want you to feel constricted by it. I want you to write your essays in a way that flows and I don't want you to feel that there's just one correct way to write an essay. Um, and if you do it wrong, like your teachers will tell you, if you do it in a, in a way that doesn't work, your teachers will be able to explain that to you. But um, yeah, let it flow and see what comes naturally. <clears throat> OK, here's the item. Lots of help in this item. Most of your points can come from the item, if not all. So that's really good. However, I would suggest that you do need to go beyond the item to get top marks um, and put in some reasons that don't relate to the item in a question like this. So the first bit of highlighted is um, contemporary globalised society. So what I'm picking up from this is um, that globalisation means that we're all much more connected and therefore we have much more access to a wider range of belief systems and we're aware of a wider range of belief systems which if we were living 100 years ago we just wouldn't even know about. So through the internet and through travel we can learn about different religious movements, um, you know like yoga kind of ori originates elsewhere within Hinduism um, and without globalisation, without the internet, without travel and things, we wouldn't even know what yoga is. So that's one reason why there's been this sort of growth um, of new age and new religious movements. So you could say that people want to become more sort of multicultural, widely cultured and want to experience different cultures and different um, movements in a globalised society. And that could be one reason for their appeal. Secondly, people are turning away from the church. So you might then think, well, why are they turning away from the church? Um, and one reason could be because of things like potential homophobia in the church and more traditional values and um, not allowing things like sex before marriage and um, seeing lots and lots of things as a sin that people nowadays like to indulge in. Um, and churches tend to have less kind of liberal values and more traditional values. So some sociologists would argue that that particularly puts off young people from wanting to be in a church um, and therefore to get their sort of religious and spiritual fix, they might go elsewhere. Now, um, when I've discussed this with my classes previously, I've been made aware by students that um, not all churches are obviously um, traditional and strict in this sense. And there are many liberal churches out there. Um, who accept everyone and obviously there's same-sex marriage now as well so um, that's a good kind of evaluation for that point something to be aware of but certainly many people turn away from the church because it's so traditional. Um, number three the next part that I've highlighted is the bit about um, individuals no longer see the church as meeting people's needs so um, in a postmodern and individualized society the church no longer gives people what they need as individuals. There's never really this sort of like focus on the individual and their spiritual journey in the same way that there is in new age movements, which allow people to kind of um, have a more individualized experience and also to practice it in a way that suits them. So the church does require some commitment um, in terms of like going to church on a Sunday and maybe being part of the church community and things. Whereas new age movements tend to be a bit less committed. I'll use yoga again as an example. And the fact that I just pop to the gym and do yoga when I fancy it or do it at home now and then. And that fits in much more with me and my lifestyle where I don't want to get up early on a Sunday morning, for example. Um, so, yeah, it, it kind of fits in more with people's individual lifestyles and what they're looking for. Um, and that might be why they appeal. Number four, the next part that I've highlighted is about rapid social change. Um, and yeah, in a society where there's a big change happening all the time um, in terms of like technology um, and we could maybe link here to things like the risk society that Beck talks about and how 
um, family life is more risky, everything's a bit more risky and unstable. Um, and therefore, people might turn to NRMs, which offer strict rules and traditional values to give them a bit of more of a sense of certainty, a bit more of a sense of stability. So, for example, people joining the People's Temple and actually going to live in Jonestown, um, they that might have appealed to some people in that it was giving them sort of this new lifestyle, which wasn't subject to all this rapid change. It was stable and it was predictable. Um, number five, people feeling on the edge of society. So because of all this change, people may feel a bit marginalised and feel a bit lost and isolated. People may feel sort of um, isolated from their family or friends, um, might not feel like they're part of society. And therefore, new religious movements and new age movements can both offer them a sense of belonging to something bigger um, and that they're not marginalised anymore. And number six, um, the part about having even more success and fulfillment, um, even the wealthy can feel deprived and may feel that they have a spiritual void that needs filling. So what I'm suggesting here is that um, a lot of the time throughout this, I've been kind of referring to people who are on the edge of society and pushed out. So really, that's sort of talking about poor and vulnerable groups and minority groups. But actually, this number six is um, suggesting that even sort of middle and upper class people might feel that they are wanting even more success or that they want some spiritual fulfillment um, that they don't really feel that they have, <clears throat> even though other things in their life are sort of successful and they feel fulfilled in other ways. They might need this um, spirituality to kind of fill a void um, where they're still not happy and where they feel relatively deprived and therefore want to be even more successful. That's the, the relatively deprived, if you remember, is the idea that anyone can feel that they're deprived in relation to someone else. So even somebody who's really, really wealthy and comfortable, um, this is a bit of a, a sort of trivial example, but if they have four TVs and their friend has like six TVs and a cinema room, they will feel deprived in comparison to them. They will feel kind of almost um, envious and almost like they haven't reached that successful level and that might be why people turn to new age movements to kind of try and better themselves and um, fill that void of something that's missing. So what I'd like you to do is for each of those points <clears throat> I'd like you to see if you can um, think of an example of an organisation. Now I've given you examples for some of them um, such as yoga and I gave you the example of Jonestown as well, <coughs> Jim Jones and the People's Temple. But I would like you to go through and annotate your um, item with examples that could link to each point. So pause this and see how you get on. Can you think of examples of actual organisations that will fit in with each of these reasons? OK, so once you've done that, we need to think about then putting it all together. So we've thought about what the question is asking and we've looked at the item to kind of try and think about how we might put it all together. And the way we want to do that is by giving points and evaluations. Now, on the previous slide, I've kind of given you like a few of the points. I haven't given you sort of names or anything, but I've given you some ideas of points. Now, I think what the hard bit at the minute for you would be the evaluation points, because we haven't yet really looked at um, evidence which supports the view that people are still kind of joining traditional churches or evidence that suggests that people are just not interested in religion at all. And both of those things are things that you would use to evaluate. Both of those things are things that we will look at later on <clears throat> in this unit um, in terms of secularisation and how things have changed um, in terms of the way that people believe and practice religion and spirituality. So um, what I've done is given you the evaluations and I'd like you to uh, pause at the end of this and see if you can think of which point from the previous slide or your own point might relate to the evaluation um, point that I'm going to give you. So, for example, this first one, many people still belong to traditional religions. Then I've put enter contemporary stats here. So when we start to look at secularisation, we'll look at the most sort of up to date statistics of how many people um, still attend church type religions 
Um, and you can look at that in terms of in different countries as well. Like in Italy, for example, the Roman Catholic Church is still very, very, very prominent and lots of people believe in it um, and things. So, yeah, many people do still belong to traditional religions. Is there a point that you could put with that um, of which that is a direct criticism? So you're thinking of a point which suggests that people don't like traditional churches anymore. That's really confusing. I'm getting you to do it in a really backwards way. But just think about it. What point could go with that? Second evaluation is that globally, many countries still have a traditional religion as dominant. For example, in Iran or the United Arab Emirates, which is places like Dubai and Abu Dhabi and Italy. Um, so, yeah, think again about which point might relate to that evaluation. Then got this idea that churches are becoming more liberal. For example, same sex marriage has become legalised. So which point might go with that? And then finally, a point here really about new age movements and that they can only really appeal to the middle classes, though, as these movements cost money, whereas the working class are more likely to be drawn to certain types of NRM. Um, so, yeah, think about is there any point there that that could that evaluation might be criticising. So by the end of this, you should then have sort of um, filled in page 20, in no, sorry, page 17 in terms of this 20 marker. And then I'd like you to have this table drawn out um, and thinking about the points you could maybe link with each of these evaluations. Now, this isn't going to be a perfect essay plan yet, because as I say, I don't think you've really learned enough yet to be able to write a 20 marker in full and do a really good job of it. But this is a good starting point. Things to remember um, in a question like this, you also need an introduction which outlines key terms, arguments or trends. So, for example, in this, I wouldn't necessarily describe what is a new age movement and what is a new religious movement. Instead, I'd outline the trend um, that there's been a growth in the membership of NRMs and NAMs um, and there are different sociological contributions to try and explain this. You also need a conclusion which sums up your key points and answers the question. Um, and you need names and concepts throughout to get those AO1 marks. And finally, you need to always use the language in the question to link back to it for application marks. So I'm giving you this information just to maybe note down in your notes um, underneath this so that you don't sort of forget. The more we write it down, the more we're going to remember that these are really my like four ingredients to make sure that you're um, hitting the uh, marks and the assessment objectives that you need to plus the previous slide obviously of having evaluation is AO3 um, if you can do all of that then you are good to go okay so moving on then to the 10 marker also on page 17 um, outline and explain two reasons why people may be turning away from the church to new forms of spiritual beliefs now, I think that having just done the previous 20 mark question, you've now hopefully got two reasons in mind that you could use from that question. So in terms of um, the item, when we looked at the item, we were looking at reasons why people might turn to New Age movements. And a couple of those reasons were to do with why they might turn away from the church. So I want you to go back and have a look at those or just if you can think of them off the top of your head or if you can think of a different reason for yourself. Um, I want you to give reasons, then use your packs, flick back through. Can you see any names or concepts um, and can you give examples of church type religions um, that would match these points and examples of bits of evidence that would support your support your claim? For example, you would it would be useful to use the legalisation of same sex marriage here as like a bit of a analysis evaluation point. So, yes, have a go at that, filling it in in your pack, please. And then um, that's what you needed to have done really for today. Checklist, make sure you've done it all. So um, on page 17, make sure you've filled in all the boxes for the 20 markers. Make sure you've written some additional notes on separate paper for the 20 marker. Um, so, yeah, looking at um, the table thing with the points and evaluations um, and the uh, anything else that you couldn't fit on your page 17. 
Um, and also I'd like you to make sure that you've planned two reasons for the 10 marker also on page 17. So we're making sure page 17 is done and giving any additional um, notes on separate paper as well. I'm not going to set it for you as a task to write these now because we're in the last week and um, by the time you hand it in next Monday, I probably won't be marking it in time to get it back to you. So normally in this last week, we'd be starting to wind down. So we're gonna do the same, but if you'd like to, you can give it a go. Um, not the 10, not the 20 marker, cause I don't think you've got enough information. And you can maybe give the 10 marker a go if you want and send it over, but there's no obligation to do so. OK, thanks very much, everyone. I hope this was helpful. Please make sure that you email me if you have any questions or if anything was not clear. Um, but also at the same time, don't stress if you feel that you haven't got enough information at the moment to write an answer to this 20 marker if you don't know what you put in it. Because as I say, you need to do more of the beliefs topic, really, to be able to put more into this essay. OK, thanks very much, everyone. Uh, speak to you soon.